Today, I will teach you how to get a more professional motion in your animations. Before we go from beginner to a more professional understanding of motion design, think of this joke. I did a theatrical performance about puns. Really, it was just a play on words. This is a fun way of building off of an idea. Now that you know the basics, let's recap. Think about what you want to do. Select the layer you want to animate. Move the anchor point based off of the motion you want using the pan behind tool. Move the playhead to where you want that motion to begin. Click the stopwatch for what you want to animate. Make the change you want to happen in the amount you want. Move the playhead to where you want that motion to end. Make the change you want to happen in the amount you want. Now let's build off of this workflow and go from beginner to a more professional motion. Step one, adjusting the speed of your motion. If you move the keyframes closer together, the change happens faster. If you move them further apart, it happens slower. Select one or as many keyframes as you need in the timeline and drag them closer together or further apart. Here is another useful tip. Click once on a stopwatch to start animating that property or parameter. If you click on the stopwatch again, you will lose all the keyframes you made for that property or parameter. Let's say you want to select all the keyframes you did for the scale stopwatch. You just learned if you click on that stopwatch again, you lose all the keyframes. Two ways to select all the keyframes for this are, one, to click on the word scale next to the stopwatch. This will select all the keyframes for this property. And two, to click and marquee drag, AKA draw a box around the keyframes in the area of the timeline where the keyframes are. Step two adjusting the velocity of your animation. When you look at the two keyframes you made for the window shade animation, notice how they are shaped like diamonds. These default keyframes are called linear keyframes. They do not speed up or slow down. They go a steady speed, like the second hand on a clock or a gear turning. These are good for animating machines or getting a steady mechanical motion. One of the 12 principles of animation is slow in and slow out. This means slowly accelerating out of the first keyframe and then slowing into the second keyframe. This can easily be accomplished by changing your keyframe interpolation or simply the velocity in or out of a keyframe. Don't tell, show is the best way to learn this next part. Click on the graph editor button at the top left of the timeline. Inside the graph editor, you will see a row of buttons along the bottom. The far left button is an eyeball with a button to the right that looks like a sheet of paper with a list on it. This is the choose graph type and options button. Click on this once and go to the edit value graph. This shows a line moving diagonally from corner to corner. This graph shows the amount of scaling being animated, not the speed of it. Value is how much is changing over time. Click once more on the graph editor button and go to the edit speed graph. This shows a line moving horizontally straight across the grid. This graph shows the velocity out of the first keyframe into the next. Velocity is how the speed of the animation changes over time. This line is flat because we are using linear keyframes. The speed is consistent, so the velocity is a flat line. Click on the graph editor button on the top left of the timeline to exit out of the graph editor and go back to your timeline. Now, let's get into the fastest way to make your motion look professional. Change the keyframe interpolation. In other words, have the velocity change from one keyframe to the next. This will give your animation more personality. Don't sweat it. This can be done with a simple click of your mouse. If you still have the introductory animation up, you'll be deleting that layer. Select your shape layer in the timeline and hit the backspace key on your keyboard to delete it from the timeline. Once again, draw a square with a solid fill of whatever color you like. Now that you have an understanding of the basics, let's learn a few simple tricks for this next action. This time, you will make your square an exact size. Once you have it drawn, twirl down the arrow to the left of the shape layer. Then twirl down the arrow by contents and the arrow by rectangle one. Lastly, Twirl down the arrow for rectangle path one. Enter in the size 150 by 150. Hit enter when done. 
You now have your perfect 150 by 150 square and keep it near the top left of the screen. Let's learn how to duplicate the layer so you don't have to go through the long process again. Select the shape layer and press Command D or Control D. When you duplicate a layer this way, it will also duplicate all of your keyframes and effects, mats, and blending modes. With the duplicate layer selected, Command D or Control D duplicate the layer three more times. There will be five layers all together. Next, let's see a shortcut to spread all of these out evenly. Select the bottom most layer with the selection arrow and move it towards the bottom left of the screen, straight down from the topmost layer. If you don't see the Align panel on the right of your screen, go to Window Align. Select the topmost layer. Hold down Shift and then click on the bottommost layer. Go to the Align panel and ignore the top row as these are already aligned on their side edges. Go to the second row, Distribute Layers, and choose the button second from the left. Distribute vertically with the bottom layer, the line going through the middle. This will spread each square out evenly from top to bottom. You saw in the first video how to add keyframes to a layer. Now, let's show you how to add keyframes to multiple layers at the same time. This is very useful when you want more than one layer to do the same thing and saves you the time of keyframe animating each layer individually. For this demonstration of the different types of keyframe interpolation and how they affect the velocity of your animation, you will be animating the position of the squares. Here is a very useful shortcut. The slow way to get to the four main stopwatches is to twirl down the arrow at the left of your shape layer, then twirl down the arrow by the contents for the layer to get to the stopwatches to animate any or all of the four pillars of motion design. The fast way of getting a stopwatch you want is to hit the shortcut key on the keyboard. P for position, S for scale, T for transparency, and R for rotation. Select all of the square shape layers. Do this by selecting the top one with the selection tool, hold down shift, and select the bottom one. Now all the square shape layers are selected. With all the layers selected, just hit the P key on your keyboard. With all the layers still selected, Click the position stopwatch in any layer, and all will be clicked on with a keyframe added in the timeline where the playhead is. Next, move the playhead. To make it easier for you to see the different types of keyframes and how they affect motion, let's go to the five second mark. With all the shape layers selected, move them straight across the screen using the selection arrow tool. Drag, then hold down shift as you keep dragging to make sure they stay in a straight line across the screen from left to right. We have our basic motion. Now we are going to learn how to fine tune it like the pros do. Let's start by renaming the layer. This way you'll learn what these new keyframe changes do. With the selection arrow, select the top layer and hit the enter key on your keyboard. This will make the text editable and you can rename it. Otherwise, right click on the layer and choose rename. Use whatever method works for you and name the top layer Lydiar. Repeat the steps above. With the selection arrow, select the layer below the linear layer and hit the enter key or right click and rename it Ease Out. Repeat the steps above with the selection arrow, select the layer below this, hit the enter key or right click and name it Ease In. Repeat the steps above. With the selection arrow, select the layer below this, hit the enter key or right click and rename it Easy Ease. Once again, you'll repeat the steps above. With the selection arrow, select the bottom layer, hit the enter key, or right click and name it Toggle Hold. Each layer you renamed will get that style keyframe applied to it. This will be the most precise visual way to show what the different keyframe styles do. For the top layer, Linear, keep both keyframes as they are, Linear, to show how this motion will differ from the other four styles below it. Select the Easy Out layer below it with the selection arrow and click on the first keyframe. Change it by right-clicking on the select keyframe and choosing Keyframe Assistant. Choose the side menu option pop out and hover the mouse down to Easy Ease Out. Select the Easy In layer below it with the selection arrow and click on the last keyframe. Change it by right-clicking on this selected keyframe and choosing Keyframe Assistant. 
choose the side menu option pop out and hover the mouse down to Easy Ease In. Select the Easy Ease layer below it with the selection arrow and select both keyframes by either marquee dragging them around or by clicking on the word position next to the position stopwatch. Again, do not click the stopwatch once you start animating or else you'll turn that stopwatch off and lose all your keyframes. Change these by clicking on either selected keyframe and choosing Keyframe Assistant. Choose the side menu option pop out and hover the mouse down to Easy Ease. This is how you can change multiple keyframes at the same time to the same style keyframe interpolation. Select the toggle hold layer below it with the selection arrow and click on the first keyframe. Then change it by right clicking on the selected keyframe and choosing toggle hold keyframe. Click on the last keyframe and change it by right clicking on the selected keyframe and choosing toggle hold keyframe. One more final trick and then we will preview the animation changes we just made. When you look at the timeline just below the numbers, you will see a gray bar. The thick blue bars at the ends of this gray bar are the render area. This means the part of your animation the computer will display for you. I always keep my render bars short to only focus on short sections of the whole animation until it is all moving the way I want it to. Take the blue bar on the right side and slide it down to the five second mark. This is where the animation ends, so you will be looping the section to only focus on the motion of it. Now, let's hit the spacebar and watch the animation loop twice. And just like magic, even though they are all traveling the same distance over the same amount of time, by changing the keyframe interpolation, aka the velocity from one keyframe into another, they are all moving in their own unique way. Now that you visually see how they are moving in and out of the keyframes differently, click on the graph editor button at the top left of the timeline and look at the speed graph for each. Click on the word position for each layer to see the speed graph for that animation. Reminder, click the word position, not the stopwatch next to it to select the keyframes. Let's start again with the linear layer. This is the choose graph type and options button. Click once on this and go to edit speed graph. This shows a line moving horizontally straight across the grid. Linear is steady speed and appears as a flat line in the speed graph. Next, click the word position in the easy ease out layer and look at its speed graph. This slows out the most it can do from the first keyframe and gradually builds up speed to the second keyframe. This layer trails behind all the others because it started out slowest from the first keyframe. Next, click the word position in the Easy Ease In layer and look at its speed graph. This speeds out the most it can from the first keyframe and gradually slows into the second keyframe. This layer is in the lead of all of the others because it started out the fastest from the first keyframe. Next, click the word position in the Easy Ease layer and look at its speed graph. This slowly moves out of the first keyframe and gradually slows into the second keyframe. Easy easing your keyframes is a classic example of the 12 principles of animation. Slow in and slow out. Click the word position in the toggle hold layer. It appears as a flat line in the speed graph. However, unlike the linear layer that has a flat speed and moves at a steady pace, toggle hold is an instant change from one thing to another. It instantly appears at the other side of the screen instead of steadily moving towards it. Thank you for tuning into this tutorial. Be sure to check out our other videos on Ken Burns and the Bouncing Ball. Best of luck bringing your visuals to life.